Well, it's been a little while since I posted one of these videos. Christmas and other things have come in the way, but I'm hoping to get back to posting them more regularly now. And in this presentation, I want to talk about a recent paper which has investigated the phenomenon called ball lightning. This has been known for centuries, perhaps millennia, as an atmospheric phenomenon that sometimes accompanies thunderstorms. It's very rare and for a long time, in fact even now, it has been a mystery exactly how ball lightning is formed. It appears as a glowing ball of light that sometimes manifests itself during thunderstorms, particularly after an ordinary lightning strike. And this ball can range in size from uh, about golf ball size to perhaps even one or two metres across. And these balls seem to drift in the air just above the ground for a short time before they fade and disappear. There are lots of historical records of this phenomenon. Some of them are quite dramatic. There was one from the 17th century in England which claimed that uh, a ball lightning perhaps about two metres in diameter pretty much demolished a country church. It went inside the church and knocked bricks down and apparently killed four people and injured many more. So it's been a long-standing mystery how this stuff gets formed. When I was an editor at Nature, we would very often receive papers claiming some new theory of ball lightning. Papers, I should say, of varying quality. But there have been some sound ideas for how this stuff might be formed. And one idea is that somehow the, the atmospheric electricity creates a kind of glowing plasma ball in the air. And some researchers have made plasmas like this in the laboratory, which look a little bit like ball lightning. Another idea that was uh, put forward quite recently is that an ordinary lightning strike, when it strikes the ground, vaporises some of the substituents of the, of the soil um, and essentially creates an atomic vapour, a, a, a gas of excited atoms, which then condense again into tiny particles, and perhaps these particles join together to make little filaments. And they've got all this excess energy, which they then radiate as light. Now, the paper that I want to talk about is one that has recently been published in Physical Review Letters, and I've written about it for the American Physical Society. And it records the first spectrum of ball lightning. So it's, it was taken by a team of Chinese scientists who are based at the Northwest Normal University in Lanzhou in northwest China. And they had taken equipment out, uh, video equipment and spectrometers, to the remote region of the Qinghai Plateau to look at ordinary atmospheric lightning. And through sheer good fortune, they happened one night to see the formation of a ball lightning. And it happened directly after a cloud to ground lightning strike. So this ball appeared. It was about um, about nine. They estimated about 900 meters away from the recording equipment. And it looks on the video um, huge. It looks about two meters in size. Uh, this is partly an article, uh, an optical artifact. It's actually uh, the actual size is is probably much smaller than this. But what is crucial about this observation? It's not as as some media reports have suggested. It's not the first time ball lightning has been captured on video, but it's the first time that the spectrum of ball lightning has been taken. And what that means is that the light that the ball lightning emits has been um, broken down into its component wavelengths so that we can see how intense the light is at different wavelengths. And what's important about that is that from the spectrum the researchers have been able to deduce what is in this glowing ball because elements, uh, chemical elements, tend to emit and absorb radiation, uh, light, at very particular wavelengths that act then as a kind of a fingerprint for the chemical identity of those elements. And so within this spectrum, the researchers saw little spikes corresponding to the emission from particular chemical elements. And what they saw was that um, prominent amongst those elements were ones that you would expect to find in soil, calcium was there, and silicon, and iron. So this very strongly suggests 
that the, the ball lightning is indeed made up of atoms that were present in the soil and that have been vaporised by an ordinary lightning strike. This ball uh, lasted for just a, a little more than a second. So, you know, it was a, a, there was very little time to, uh, to get any more information than this. And the researchers themselves confirm that uh, really we still don't have enough information from this spectrum to be able to definitively uh, say whether a particular theory of the formation of ball lightning is correct or not. But as one, of the, uh, as one researcher um, said who I, who I spoke to about this work, what it does seem to confirm is that this ball lightning, at least, is made of dirt. The original paper is for subscribers only, I'm afraid, but my report for Physical Review Focus is available for free.